Welcome to another video in the series playlist called What Should I Be Doing With My Real Estate Agent Website? So in the first video, we went over the entire overview of all the different things we should be creating, um, kind of as a, a glance into what you will be creating, uh, getting an idea over what your workflow might be. Now we're going to break these into individual chunks and talk about uh, specific things. So one of the things that I talked about in video one uh, to be doing with your real estate agent website is creating homes for sale pages on your website. Okay. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. There's going to be two different lessons um, in this series. One of them is going to be on neighborhood pages, community pages. That's a separate lesson. This one is going to be homes for sale by price, homes for sale by area, homes for sale by feature. And you're, when you build out all of these pages, the goal is to rank on the search engines, potentially, if you're working on that, uh, and also to have links for your advertisements that you might be um, wanting to put out there on social media ads or Google pay-per-click ads. I do really well with these on pay-per-click and um, on the search engines. Although I will tell you that it is more challenging that we are competing with these huge portals like Zillow and, and Realtor.com and Trulia, but there's still a lot of opportunity. Let me show you what I mean. When I go over here to my uh, Clicky Analytics, and remember on video one, I talked about the fact that we need to be installing analytics on our, um, on our, on our websites and I like Clicky, and then I also install Google Analytics and Google Search Console, which we'll talk about in another video. But if you're able to do that on your platform, great. You want to make sure you install that. Now, what I'm able to see is this is a glance of the visitors that are on my website right now or have been on my website today. So this is just today. Now, what I'm able to see here is the time they were on, the area they're coming from, their IP address, how many actions they took, and actions are like clicks, um, page views, video views, downloads, that type of thing, okay? Typically, I find somebody that takes one action isn't so serious, but somebody that takes multiple actions, I've probably got a, a pretty good visitor there, okay? I can tell how long they stayed on my website and um, where they came from. And then I'm able to see what piece of content it was that attracted them. What page was it? that generated that traffic. Now, I also track all these when they become leads so that I can assign ROI to a specific page on my website, which is pretty fantastic. But for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down and show you. So this one was how to sell your house, okay? Now remember today, the topic we're talking about today is those homes for sale pages, okay? So here's somebody on my um, general real estate pages um, that entered on my general homes for sale page. Now look at this one. This one is on my homes for sale under 100,000 page. Yes, in Vegas, we still have homes under 100,000. So that's an example of a homes for sale by feature. So let me just go ahead and show you this page. Oops, hold on. I entered the wrong URL. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we have all homes under 100,000. Now what you'll notice on this page is all I have is properties. There's no, there's not a lot of text. There's nothing really to distract them from just looking at homes. And this page still ranks on top of the search engines in spite of the fact that it has no written word, very few written words. It's got like, I don't know, 10 words on the page besides this homes for sale search widget, okay? And this here is um, a pricing table. And I highly, highly recommend these pricing tables because a lot of times somebody will Google something like homes for sale in a particular zip code or homes for sale. Maybe it'll say two bedroom, two bath home for sale. And Google will often send them to this page, the homes for sale under 100,000 because I rank for so many other terms around it. Well, that person may not have specifically been only looking for homes under 100,000. So they might go ahead and click over here to this other link, homes for sale under 200,000. 
typically based on my studies, it's usually they price down something to think about there, right? So I've got these pricing tables. I've got homes by bedroom, homes by size, homes by single story, two story, that type of thing. And that is what we are building out here, okay? So homes for sale by feature, homes for sale by price, homes for sale by area, that type of thing. You want to be building out each of these pages individually. One of the mistakes that I see real estate agents make is they rely on their IDX provider to either provide simply this search widget up here where the consumer can just do their search manually or they rely on IDX links where they just set up a quick link and then they share those links. Well, those links, you don't want to be ranking your IDX on the search engines. You want to be ranking your own website, your primary domain, your main pages, not your subdomain or subfolder, which is your, is going to, it's going to have an IDX, um, IDX URL within this URL. You want to put it on the main one. The main reason for this is, is let's just say you break up with your IDX provider. And for those who don't understand IDX, that's this grid of homes right here. Okay. IDX stands for internet data exchange, and it's what allows our MLS to syndicate out, um, to be, to, to be able to insert these grids and these homes on our website. And that's all done through IDX. Well, there's a whole bunch of different IDX providers out there. Now, if you're locked into a website where they automatically provide the IDX and you don't have a choice of who to use, then you need to figure out how that IDX works at the highest level. If you've built your own website, something like on a WordPress, then you can choose any IDX provider that you're able to um, work with on your WordPress website. There's lots of solutions. For us, we chose IDX Broker. And if you look in the link in this video, um, there is in the description of this video, or you go to lorystools.com, that is lorystools.com, there's a link to IDX Broker. If you decide to sign up with IDX Broker, go down here and use our link. What'll happen is you'll save the setup fee and my marketing company, Ballon Brands, now becomes an extra layer of support for you which is extra nice because we are IDX broker developers. So we know them, we work with them, we put in special feature requests and it's a nice extra layer for you to, to have that support and it saves you the setup fee. Also, if you are in need of a website still before you go choose that, that, um, that IDX, check out balandbrands.com slash brew my marketing company actually builds these websites. Um, and you might already be having one. You might be watching this on our Rank Like a Boss training course and you've already got one. So we build these, we put in the IDX, we've done lots of customization to the IDX itself. Um, you're gonna love it. So check out balandbrands.com, call our team and you can talk all about the integration and how everything works, okay? So you have choices, you have choices. You don't have to be locked into any kind of long-term contract with these websites, but it is important to follow the teachings that I do because I teach you how to build the SEO onto your own website, not onto the IDX provider. You don't want to be doing that. Links at building these little links, like with IDX broker, they have the ability to go in and build a little link. Those are great for like running a pay-per-click ad or something like that, where I don't care about SEO and I want to track those separately. But for the most part, you want to be creating pages with these widgets, which I'm going to show you right now how to do. All right. So I'm going to go up here to new. Now, if you have a brew, which Ballon real estate website, you're going to build a showcase page. So let me click on that and you're going to build a showcase page. Showcase pages are different. They're, they're a, a new page, just like, um, just like a regular WordPress site would have, but there's some special features in here that we've added. And one of them is the ability to actually build on um, those little pricing tables. Let me go back and show you that again. Whoops. Grab that homes for sale. Oh, now I lost it. Okay, hold on. We'll just do this. I'll go to homes for sale. And we will pick homes for sale under 500,000. Well, actually, even this page right here. See these little tabs and drop down bars and things like that? <clears throat> Excuse me. These are created automatically, dynamically depending on how you set your page up on the brew. 
So if you have a brew there, I have a separate lesson plan for you on how to build out these showcase pages in depth. So you can go back and watch that, okay, on the brew playlist. But if you are just, you just have a regular WordPress website, let's say, and you're gonna, you're creating pages on your website, then you're just gonna go in and create a page, okay? I'll kind of show you both versions here real quick as we go through this. If you're not using WordPress, if you have a, another website provider, um, if you don't have the ability to build out these pages, then you're gonna kind of hit a wall right now on this because this is one of the most powerful things that I do is build out these community pages and you're not, if you don't have that ability, you're kind of stuck there. I would say if you don't have that ability, you got to start doing it on blog posts and kind of do a little work around so that you're still getting some of that traffic and some of those search engine rankings building up. Okay. So if you, if you are not sure, talk to your developer, your website provider, and ask them if you have the ability to create homes for sale pages by feature. Okay. And if not, you want to check it out, go over and look at our brew websites. They're very affordable and you own them. And there's no, there's no contracts for that. Okay. So, um, here's what we do. We're going to go over here to my widget. So I am now on IDX broker. So this is my IDX provider. Okay. I'm going to go up here to designs and I'm going to click widgets and I'm going to click create. Now I have full playlist, full lesson plans on how to use IDX. So don't panic. Today, I really want to make sure you just kind of see the overview on how to build these pages, but definitely dive into the IDX lesson plan and really learn more about how to use IDX broker at a super high level. Okay. So the widget I'm going to choose today is going to be showcase. There's lots of different widgets you can build slideshows, carousels, map searches. We're just going to build a showcase. So that's going to create that grid of homes. That's the showcase properties to feature. I'm going to build a custom search. This is how I build the homes for sale by feature and then choose a search page. I'm going to go to advanced search. Now here's the thing with this, whatever MLS fields you have, you can build a homes for sale by that field. Okay. So it's going to be so different. My MLS here in Las Vegas, compared to uh, an MLS in a, um, in a in a water community, a beach community, are going to be completely different. You're going to have things like boat docks, and I'm going to have things like mountain views, right? So they're not going to be the same. But whatever is in your MLS, you have the ability to go in here and add to your advanced search page so that you can then build all of these homes for sale by feature, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I only want to showcase uh, single family homes. And in my case, I could go to high rise. I could go to land. I could go to multiple dwellings. So I'm going to stay in residential and I'm going to do single family home. I only want to show active listings. That means they're not already under contract. And I'm going to show homes that are in Las Vegas. Okay. So let's say I want to build a page of homes for sale in Las Vegas that are under 300,000. Okay. And that are, let's see, what kind of specialty do I want to do? Let's scroll down under 300,000 that have three stories. You'd be surprised at the people that actually search things like tri-level homes and three-story homes. Okay. So let's do that. Now let's say I want to see if there are any properties available. I'm going to click on view results in a new window. And I can see here that there's seven results. Here's the map where they're pinned on the map. And yes, the consumer will see this once they click through to view more results. And here's the actual houses that are for sale. So this one would work perfectly fine. I've probably already, I'm sure I've already built this one, but we'll go ahead and use it as an example. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to title this three story homes in Las Vegas under $300,000. I'm the only one that sees this. Okay. This is for me. Nobody else sees this. Then I can sort this by price, by oldest listing, newest listing, square foot, bedrooms, bathrooms. In this particular case, because I'm doing homes under 300,000, I'm going to do the highest price down. So I'm going to go to most expensive to least. And then I'm going to make this a three column widget. Now columns, if we look here, this is how many columns see here. 
Now, if I change this from a three column to a four column, the boxes all get smaller. If I change this from a three column to a two column, the boxes all get bigger. I personally love the aesthetic of the three column widget, so I, I build three columns, okay? So we'll go back here at three columns. Now, I don't wanna have 100 listings on that page. I wanna show a, a, a certain number of listings and then I want them clicking through to view more and then they'll be able to access that map. So you could do three listings, six listings, nine listings. I think our standard in Brew is 15 listings. And then I'm gonna do display view all results, yes. And then I'm gonna click build widget. I'm gonna take this code, this is JavaScript code, I'm gonna copy it. So what you can't see me doing is I'm highlighting and then I'm just hitting Command C on my Mac here to actually copy the code. And then I'm gonna go back over to my page. All right, let me show you on a standard page first because that's easy. So I would title this Homes for Sale in Las Vegas. Actually, I would title this Three Story Homes for Sale in Las Vegas under 300,000 or under 300K, all right? Now, simple, I would click on this text tab so I can access the code, okay? Now, if you're gonna do any other SEO on the page, you wanna do your SEO, um, I always change this permalink up here. It's way too long. So I would just do three story 300k something like that so that that url is not so long i'll show you in a second how to do it on the showcase page but this would just be a straight um mls page if you have yoast you can go down here and do your seo okay i'm going to set a featured image on this so i'm going to go up here and i'm going to upload a picture or i'm going to choose one from my media library okay and then let's go ahead and preview this so you can see what it would look like it's that simple. You see how simple that is? Now, if you want to, you could just put three homes here and then a view all results. What happens is when the customer clicks view all results, it goes to the page that has the map and it lists all the results. So either way is fine, okay? On a mobile, oh, let's see. On a mobile, it looks like this. Ignore all my stuff in the background there, my UPS return label. On a mobile, the home stack like that and then you have the view all results, okay? All right, that's as simple as it can possibly be. Now, the challenge then with the simpleness of that is that you don't have like your automatic dynamic pricing table up here. So we built this into the brew. It makes it a little bit more complicated. There's more steps. However, the final result is, is much more user friendly. I test all of this on heat maps and scroll maps so I can see where everybody clicks. So I know what works. It's pretty incredible, okay? In fact, let me see if I have one here. Hold on, let's just log in really quick to our heat map. And let me go to our real estate website and click on heat maps. And let me see if I can find one that's got the little grid on it. I think this one here. Let me see. I was just looking for one with a little bit more views. We just set these all up to renew. All right, well, let's just go ahead and look at that one up there. So Las Vegas homes under 200,000. Let me view that one. Okay, so on this one, um, on desktop, what we're able to see is that they are clicking on these. Look at this, you guys. This is the desktop version. This little three bedroom option right here, 16.52% of all the clicks on the page went to that one button. Then you scroll over here and another 4.35% went on that button and another 2.61% went on that button. So let's round up, let's just say three, seven. Uh, so 23% of all the clicks went to those three buttons on the page. Then you add in this drop down option. And those are, these are all, these are all part of our special brew. These are the websites that I build that have this feature in it. Another 15% went right up here. Holy cow. So that's a lot of clicks on the page are going into these pricing tables. So this is how I know this is how I knew to build these over time as I started measuring these clicks and what people like and I was testing different options. And here you can see they're clicking on the IDX, right? 
but not none of these individual IDX buttons are getting the, the clicks like these are, okay? And then down here, they're go, you can see they're scrolling down to that view all results. That's why it might be even better to only do six listings and then have the view all results. You gotta kind of test that. We're still testing that ourselves. I've been testing a lot of six spots lately and I kind of like those as well. Um, up here, now if I were to switch over to mobile, I'm able to see what's happening on a mobile device, okay? Now, I've talked about this search widget up here on um, on the first video, and this one's still getting a, a lot of clicks, okay? But now look at our pricing table on mobile. Holy schmoly, 23.76% of the clicks here. So let's round up 24, um, 29, 31, 36. All right, so 37% of all the clicks on the page are going up here to this little dynamic pricing table that is generated on the brew websites. And the reason this is so powerful, guys, is it reduces the bounce rates, which is people clicking on and then off because they don't like what they see. It's a better user experience. Customers stay longer on the website. They find what they're looking for. They're more likely to convert to actually be leads. It's a quality signal for Google, for search engines. It's a quality signal to your pay-per-click landing pages so you can get more clicks for less money because your quality score goes up. I mean, win, 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 win all over the place with these dynamic um, showcase pages and pricing tables. So if I were to build out one of those, if you have one of my brews, let me show you how this works instead, okay? So we're gonna go here to add a new showcase page and we're gonna title this one just like we would the other one. Uh, three story homes for sale in, um, three story homes for sale under 300,000. All right, I don't need to use the Las Vegas in this title because the way the showcase pages are built is they're all built under a parent page. And in my case, Las Vegas is the top tier because of its, it's under location. So we have locations and then we have Las Vegas. So I don't need to repeat that necessarily, okay? So now three-story homes for sale under 300,000. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go down to my Las Vegas homes for sale. Um, let's see. These are all the pages I built on my website, insane. But they don't take a long time, so don't let that overwhelm you when you see how many pages I've built, okay? So see what I mean here? See the URL is self-creating? So locations Las Vegas, it's already in the URL, okay? And now I wanna find my three-story home. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find my three-story home. See, there it is, I've already built it. Three-story homes for sale in Las Vegas. Okay, now look, the URL just added another layer, three-story homes, okay? Now I need to title it by whatever my focus is now. We've already got locations, we've already got Las Vegas, we've already got three-story homes, what's left? Right, price, price. So I'm gonna put 300K, okay? And that's gonna create my URL. Now, automatically, it, already, it also creates a, cre a category box link text. So remember over here um, where we had our, do I have one open, where we had our pricing table. See this? This is what it means by link text. So whatever it drops down here is what's going to show up here in this link text. Okay? So that's what that is. And it does it for me automatically, but I might want to add the word like under 300K or homes under 300K. Whatever I want to show up in that box is what I'm going to type in right here. Okay, now categories. Now, what did I just tell you guys this was? What did we say we had to manually enter? What's our focus for this page? Price, we already built three story homes. We already built our Las Vegas page. We're now on price. So all I have to do is go over to categories and click on price. Now, when you first get your brew, you're gonna build out those categories. They're quite simple. And I would tell you to focus on things like area and price before you start getting fancy schmancy like I do with schools and all that kind of stuff, okay? So it's under the page three-story homes and three-story homes is under the page Las Vegas and Las Vegas is under the page locations. You see how that works? You can see your hierarchy if you look at your URL. So now we have price is under, feature is under the location. That's how I built this all out. And I've got other training videos all on the hierarchy of how to build a website. But I just kind of wanted to give you this, this little um, view of how this works right here. And that's all there is to 
creating that dynamic table. I'm going to show you how it shows up in just a second. Then we go over to our search widget. We grab that code. And on my showcase page, I'm just going to add this little content block called IDX Broker Showcase Widget. The content blocks are awesome because they have preset options for video or for three column boxes or for a, a divider, a page divider. And if you follow my, my trainings, I teach you all what all of that stuff is. Okay, you don't have to learn it all at once. And then we're gonna go over here and preview this to see what this looks like. We are almost done. See there? There's that dynamic pricing table under three. Now, it's funny, I, already, I had already created a, you know what I'm gonna do, watch this. Well, it's okay. So now what I wanna do, I've done my three-story home for sale under 300,000. Now I'll go get, build a page that says three-story homes for sale under 400,000. Three-story homes for sale under 500,000. Three-story homes for sale under 600,000. And that way, if anybody actually is Googling those type of keywords, my website is likely to come up on, one, on, a, on a top search. And that's how we start generating that traffic. Now, in addition, on this page, three-story homes for sale under 300,000. Now I can go build sub pages like three-story homes for sale under 300,000 with a pool. Three-story homes for sale under 300,000 with views. Three-story homes for sale under 300,000 with an elevator, you know, any kind of the handicap accessible. Three-story homes for sale under 300,000 um, with a mother-in-law quarters. I'm just giving you examples, not that all of those would, not that all of those would be under 300,000. But now I can build out each one of those. So there's this hierarchy that allows us to build out all of these prices and all these homes by feature and that kind of thing. Um, you know, if you don't want to be the one that sits and does all this stuff, I would suggest looking at virtual assistants, virtual assistants, like in the Philippines, they make like eight bucks an hour, you know, three or four of you could share a person or you could just hire one part time. And, you know, all they do is build out your widgets for you. Okay. You can do that even for short term. My marketing company, Ballon Brands, we can build these widgets out for you as well. If you want to hire us to build them out for you, um, you could look into your college interns and see if there's somebody in marketing class or web development or real estate or something and th that needs to get some credit hours in that'll help you build these widgets. Um, I hired my daughter at 11 years old. She's now almost 15 to build out these widgets and I paid her per widget course that got really expensive really fast I pay I started by paying her a quarter a widget and she's so fast it was like she walked in and said okay I need a hundred dollars please you know so you got to be careful about that if you are going to use um you are going to use these kids they're they're amazing on the computer and super fast so so set a budget so that they can build these uh, my point is you have so many options guys your admin can do these you could just say you know what our daily routine I got a new brew website or I'm using whatever website and I want to build out these community pages. So I want you to build one price range a day, or I want you to build 10 widget pages, pages a day. Um, you know, it takes me five minutes to build a widget page probably. So what is that? I, I'm not going to do math very well. Is that 12 in an hour? Um, and so you might just give them one hour out of the day, but in that hour, they have to do 15 widgets or 10 widgets or whatever it is. And that's what you have budgeted for that day. And believe me, it will start adding up. It will start growing quickly as you start building these things. And then continue on with this video series because I'm, uh, I'm gonna talk about now how to build those neighborhood pages and community pages with content, with words on the page that describe these communities. So these are just homes for sale by feature, but we're gonna go into the neighborhood and community pages next. And then in this series, we're also gonna cover blogging, we're going to cover Facebook ads. We're going to cover um, Google AdWords. We're going to cover adding your analytics, uh, market reports, because that's something I talk about that everybody should be doing with the real estate website. We're going to cover reviews. Okay. And um, so keep on learning. And um, I would say before you go on to the next video, go test this out and try some of these and make sure you got a handle for it. Make sure you know who's going to do it and then move on to the next part where we start building out our community pages. All right, thanks for joining me today. And again, if you want more information on the website or on IDX Broker specifically, lauristools.com 
and balanbrands.com.